Hi, my name is Chris Hoy. I am the owner and founder of Cupboard Distributing, CD Stencils, and the Pixelated Palette. And today I wanted to share with you this adorable little project that absolutely anyone can paint. And I think at Christmas time, it's so important to do family things together. And this is just one of those crafts that anyone can create, whether you have talent or not. It's just an adorable little piece and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. So let's get started. I'm using Chalky Gesso to do the base coat. Super easy to work with. It has a very opaque base to it and it usually only takes one or two coats to get a nice coverage. Now, because I don't want this super heavy, just going to make sure that I brush it on nice and smooth. I don't want to get paint on the side edges, so I'm just going to pull it down to the edge. So I'm starting at one end, pulling it down. Then I'll flip it around and do the same thing. I definitely don't want these stop and start lines. I don't know if you can see those or not. So after I get it smoothed on or covered, I'm just going to go back and smooth it out nicely. There may be some little brush marks. I can decide once it dries whether or not it will need a second coat. To make it look even more weathered, you could add a coat of antiquing at this point or flick on a little bit of splattering. To work on the snowman's face, I need to decide where his hat will be and that is determined by the positioning of the brim. Now there is a line drawing in the pattern, but what you can simply do is kind of figure out where you like. And I kind, I kind of like that little bit of an angle. I think that looks cute. So I'll decide where I want it and I'll draw a line there. And that's where the, the base of the hat is. And I'm using um, this chalky gesso black to paint the hat and the hat brim. Again, this is just a really great product. It covers well, goes on super smooth, very, very easy to work with. Now, see where my line is? I'm going to paint just below that. Just go right below that. I'm not being too fussy because that brim's gonna cover it up. But once I get that on there, I do wanna go back and kind of just smooth that out. And I will go back and sand the top edge of the hat just a little bit so it doesn't look super new and fresh. And when it dries, I'll decide if I wanna add a second coat on that ahead and do the brim and I am going to go down to a filbert on that so I have a little better control trying to be careful not to drip it over the edges you just don't need that much paint this goes on so well and chalky gesso not only is a great base paint um, but it's also a sealer as well, which means that you won't have to go back and put a, um, you won't have to start with a sealer. You can just put the gesso on as a sealer and a base coat, roll it all into one. You notice the difference between the consistency of the, the base on the brim and the hat. The reason being this is, looks a little bit thinner and that's because we have a bright white base below that. So I'm just going to put a second coat on the hat itself just to make sure that that's fairly solid. And I'm just going back to work out any brush strokes because this is thicker. You just don't want lumps in it. I just want to position the hat brim to make sure that everything is looking good. And to add the face, 
want to have enough area. The scarf is down here. I'm going to pick out the middle of the face. I have my number five spectacular, or I'm sorry, I have my number five radical round. And um, using orange paint, this is persimmon, any orange will do. To paint the nose, you wanna start in the middle. And a nose kind of has little, um, or a carrot always has those little ridges in it. So I'm just kind of creating that. And then I want to go back and smooth the edges. And just like that, don't make this difficult. This is super easy to create. I'm going to smooth that up just a little bit. But if you tap it on kind of like little strokes, you'll get those ridges. And that's where I'm just going to leave it like that. To create the eyes, I'm going to switch over to my Sharpie marker. And I always do the left eye first because I'm right-handed and I wanna make sure they kind of match up. And we'll just do kind of a little oval shape. When you're drawing with a marker on a surface like this, you wanna make sure you have a light touch Otherwise, you'll get raggedy edges. Wow. Have a little nick right there. I'm gonna touch that up. He needs little eyebrows. Draw a couple little eyebrows on there, and of course, a few little eyelashes. And using a marker is no different than using paint. You wanna let it dry. I'm seeing a little bit of a thin area in here. I'll wait until that dries to go back and touch it up. And we'll just draw a little happy mouth on there. Oh my goodness, isn't he adorable? And he needs, every snowman has to have a little bit of sparkle in his eyes. Just going back with some chalky white gesso. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of sparkle in the top left of each eye. Next, I wanna add some little frosty cheeks. I've loaded my spectacular stencil brush with watermelon slice, and I'm just gonna wipe the excess out. And I'm just brushing it over a paper towel. This, this just needs a really soft cheek. And if you have too much paint on your brush, you're going to get a heavy cheek. And I'm just going to kind of start in the middle. And I like to do my cheeks at the same time. And when I build them up, that way they're going to be very identical. And just work back and forth. Don't worry about that nose, it's just gonna blend right in until you get those cheeks just as rosy as you want them. I only have one thing left to do and that's to outline the nose and I'm going in with the fine end of my adenopan. And I'm gonna take this off just to make it easier. Carrots are not smooth, so you can bring that down, follow those ridges. There we go. Oh, that looks great. If you want to, you can go back later and pile a little snow on his nose. But I think that will be perfect. The hat is nice in the end covered solidly, but we want to add a little distressing. So I'm just going to go back with my sandpaper and lightly sand over that again. Kind of give it a little bit of distress. And I want the brim to match as well. So I'll do the brim also. Just until you're happy with it. Okay. 
and we are piling snow on there as well. To add just a little bit of snow on the top of his hat and brim, I am using my radical round and dipping into a little bit of the uh, chalky white gesso and I'm just going to roll it across the top and pretty much just pile it on. You don't have to be particular. And all that sanding I did, I'm covering most of it up, but that's okay. It's, snowed quite a bit here. And let's pile a little bit on the top of this brim as well. I'm just basically rolling the brush over the top just so we get a nice little pile of snow there. I'm going to set this aside to dry and we've got our little snowflake and need to add some sparkle with that. To paint the snowflake, everybody always has trouble with it running down the sides. And I found out a really simple way is to use your finger and just gently kind of tap it on. If you have too much paint on your finger, no different than a brush, it's going to drip over the sides. Using the chalky gesso, I like that little bit of texture that this tap, tap, tap is getting. It's on here fairly. thick. I don't want to say thick um, because it's, it's not drippy thick. It's, it has a little bit of body to it, so it's not going to run down the side. So I could tap this on and wait for it to dry and do a second coat, but I want to give this a little bit of sparkle, and that's going to cover up any imperfections in the application of the gesso. So I'm just going to do a real quick coverage with that. Clean my finger, get my little piece of paper here. And I'm using Crystal Glamour Dust. Still wet, very wet. I'm just going to coat that little snowflake heavily with Glamour Dust. I'm just going to let it sit there. Same thing on this. I put that first layer on. This I want just a little bit heavier. So I'm just going to go back, add a little bit more to make sure that's nice and glistening. And while that is still super wet, I'm going to do the same thing. And the reason I use this, and this is canary tracing paper, put that underneath and it just catches all my gla excess glamour dust. And then I can just simply put it back in the jar when I'm finished. It's getting a little bit too samey samey, so I'm gonna go back and kind of make it a very distinct. Same thing, I'm just gonna put that glamour dust all over the top of that. Look, can you see how that sparkles? I know it's really hard on camera. And we'll let this dry completely. I'm going to tap it off and then brush it gently. And then I'll just put the excess back in the jar. Next, we want to put the letters on, and they can be done a, a couple different ways. And if you have a pattern, you can simply trace them on, use your Sharpie marker or, or your IdentiPen uh, marker to create the letters. Or you can also, if you notice, these are in printed in reverse. And we're going to do the image transfer using the photo transfer medium. It's a great way to add impressive um, elements to your design without struggling with perfection. And these letters are rustic, and I think that's my new favorite word because rustic means they don't have to be perfect. Love that. Photo Transfer Medium is an amazing product. 
and it's very easy to use, but you do have to remember to abide by the rules. This is something that is very important. So I am going to take the medium and I have my letter cut out. Now what I did on my letter, I tried to cut it out evenly because you definitely don't want it sitting at an angle and it's hard when you can't see to line it up, but if the paper is even, evenly cut, you can space it evenly on the tile. I am going to apply the medium to the ink side of the paper, as well as the surface of the tile. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the tile first. And then, and I've got a paper towel down because I don't want to get it on the back side of the paper, just on that ink side. Once I have that on there, and you need a generous amount, but not overly messy. And then I can just line that up. Now, because I've got medium around the edge, I usually take a paper towel and press it down so that I don't get the medium on my hands nor on the back side of the paper. And if you have a brayer that works really well, you wanna make sure that you get all the bubbles and wrinkles out. The bottle is an awesome brayer. And I just use that to kind of roll over that, smooth it out, and get make sure it's on nice and tight. That's it, you don't put any on the back side. just let it sit like this. And you need to let it set overnight is great. And I think it says on the bottle, maybe like four hours or eight hours. I'm very impatient, so I usually do it in the evening. The next day, it's good to go. While I'm waiting for my image transfer to set up, I will go ahead and work on the little snowman face again. Grab some glue. I like working with quick grip. I, I, it's never fallen apart. Whenever I use quick grip, it glues quickly and it never falls apart. Just going to add a little bit of glue to the back side. Don't go over the edges. And kind of get that situated the way I want it. Oh, that looks good. And stick my little snowflake on there. And make sure it doesn't stick on his eye. Move it up just a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little more glue back down here. Oh, that looks great. It still moves around a little bit, but once that sets up, it's there for good. Need to add just a little bit of sparkle on his cheeks. Going in with the chalky white, just adding a few little dots. And I think it's fun to make it snow just a little bit. You can use the chalky white gesso for falling snow, but you do have to thin it down just a tad. I'm using a splatter brush, and I wanna just do mostly the, the hat. It really won't show up anywhere else. So we'll just add some splatters on the hat. Make, oh, that's so cute. It is now the next day, and this has had a chance to dry overnight. Need to remove the paper, and the concept is that we'll remove the excess paper, and the only thing that will be left will be the ink. I usually just take my fingers and dip them in water and saturate the paper, and make sure that's nice and wet. 
and just let it set for probably about five minutes. So I'm just beginning to gently rub and hopefully you can see that the paper is being kind of rolled up. And as we keep rubbing, it's just going to getting a little more water. I can feel the texture on my finger. And I said before, one thing really nice about this particular font is the fact that it's a little bit distressed. So those marks are not missing ink. That's the way it is intended to be. That gives you a little more lead way. Just gonna kind of roll this. You can see how it just gently rolls off. You have to be gentle when removing the paper, uh, but you have to have enough rub that you're gonna loosen it. If it starts to be a little more difficult, just add a little more moisture to it. And you can feel the roughness of the paper. So we're just taking the paper off and leaving the ink. There may be just a tiny little edge on the side where you cut around those letters, but that is barely noticeable. And after I get to a certain point, I'm gonna rub a little harder in this area because I know that's just paper and I don't need any of that there. Just gonna grab a paper towel. I probably should have put one down just to kind of keep my workspace a little cleaner. There's, I, I've seen different methods of removing the paper. Some use a damp washcloth. Um, some use a paper towel. I like to use my fingers because I can actually feel how much paper is still left and how much needs to be removed. After I get all of this removed, I will wait, let it dry really well and just repeat it to get any residue off of there. If you rub too hard, you could just remove the ink as well, which I don't want to do. Isn't that amazing? It just fascinates me every time I do this, how quick and easy, even allowing the dry time, uh, how much precision that is a result of doing the image transfer. And you can do this not only with letters, but you can always do this um, also with photos. The possibilities are just endless. Okay, so I think you get an idea of how easy that is. And like I said, if you're not crazy about um, some of the edges, you want to clean them up, just grab your pen, fill in any areas where the ink may have lifted. You are good to go. The only other thing that needs painted is this little buckle and I'm just using some of the chalky black uh, to put a, a nice coat on that. Make sure that I cover the top surface well, being careful not to let it drip over the sides. Most of this is going to be covered, but remember I said earlier, this also acts as a sealant as well as a base coat. So it's just a good way to protect. If you're giving this as a gift, it may not be a bad idea to go ahead and finish both sides. It just gives a nice appearance. Make sure you smooth it out nice and even. And now that that is finished, everything is painted and ready for assembly. I do want to put a little scarf on the snowman and I'm just using, this is a wired ribbon. I like the fact that it's wired because after it's tied, you can kind of give a little bit of a, a flip and a fold to that just to make a little more life to it. And I will just get a length of it 
This is um, variegated from light to dark. So I'm just gonna put the light or the dark part towards the top. And if it's a little bit wider, I'll just kind of bunch it up. and tie my little knot on there. Trying to get those edges so they're not folded over. Let me start again. Might be easier to bunch it up after I get it tied. This is what's so nice about having those uh, wired edges because it gives you that little bit of there I can bunch it up just a little more flexibility on how that's going to look and I'll cut this one just a little bit shorter You can either uh, hit the edges with a little bit of a flame or put some clear fingernail polish on to seal those edges. What a difference that little scarf makes. He is adorable. On this buckle, the hanger, what I did was just take, this is two and a half inch ribbon. And again, it's wired. I like that wired look. I want it to loop over the the buckle, and if it's if you just have a ring without this middle bar, it just kind of gathers here at the bottom and gets kind of, um, makes it hard to put the greenery on. Having the bar there is gonna keep that ribbon smoother. It's just gonna look a little more neat and tidy. And I'm just gonna put that through, make sure those edges are nice and flat and then I'll just glue this on the back side and then once that's glued on there you have a really nice flat surface and I'm just gonna grab this I'm, I'm not quite finished with getting the paint off but I wanted to go ahead and just put that on there and then I will take a little more hot glue, glue this to the back of this board, and then just keep gluing them on there. Space them however far apart you want them spaced. Also having this wired edges gives you a little more stability in the, the ribbon so it's not as limp and loose. Just a really cute wall hanging. On the greenery here at the top, I tell you, I didn't have anything. I, I, I didn't buy anything fancy. I have a pine tree out back um, that has these little tiny pine cones on them. However, I think they're available at pretty much any craft store. And this is greenery that's been around for quite a few years. But I wanted to spruce it up. And so when I... I glued it all on, or before I glued it all on, I just took a little bit of that white gesso, frosted it while it was still wet. I don't know if you can see or not, but I dusted it with the Glamour Dust, so it has a little bit of sparkle on it. It's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Makes a fantastic little wall hanger. And at the end, we did, I did a little, whoops, kind of got folded up here, a little fishtail on the ribbon at the end, but just a really fun wall hanging. And the other thing you can do, let me look a couple little options. I took the same exact same little face, and instead of putting the hat on, this is the cuff of a red sock. And I just cut it off, tied a little bit of uh, jute, or this is, uh, you know, the little jute at the top. Same thing, just a little bit of greenery, frost it with some um, chalky gesso, a little bit of sparkles, stick some berries in there. And then on this one, I didn't want to do the wall hanging. So I did, 
this way and then it kind of folds it stands up and by it folding like this it'll be freestanding put a different kind of a little scarf on him and i think it's just adorable i did add some little stamped snowflakes you could stencil them possibilities that are kind of endless on this so i hope you enjoyed this fun little christmas uh, craft just does not take any talent at all the kids the grandkids the nieces nephews have them over when they have fun these little tiles are just wonderful to work with inexpensive and you can create a multitude of different designs i did a little gingerbread again you can hang them up you can have them uh, fold there's so many different things that you can do with these so thank you again for joining me for this quick little tutorial all the supplies are available at cupboard distributing www.cdwood.com and we have a little kit that has all the pieces in it to do the wall hanging that you can get for just a click of the button so take a look cupboard distributing www.cdwood.com i want to thank you for joining me today to do these two little quick fun projects i hope you picked up a few tips and tricks just absolutely so much fun what we can create with just a little bit at Christmas time. So if you need any of the supplies, they are available at Cupboard Distributing, www.cdwood.com. Again, thank you for joining me and wishing you all a very Merry Christmas.